so in the last video we had examined this uh, this many cycle pipeline and we were looking at what problems are introduced by that so we had already talked about multiple writes finishing in the same cycle and then uh, the problems with read after write and write after write hazards I'm next going to talk about what happens with possibly imprecise exceptions which is a huge topic in itself before I get to that let me close the page on hazards so we've talked about two kinds of hazards there are two other possible hazards right after read and read after read hazards so let's look at the first one so when does this happen when there is a read from R1 and sometime later there is a write into R1 right so this is write after read and we expect that the write into R1 will happen later if you were to reverse the order somehow that will lead to a wrong result so can that happen in our basic five stage pipeline let's let's look at an example so you have instruction one which starts in cycle one and then it does the register read in cycle two instruction i2 coming behind it starts in cycle two and it does the register write in cycle six so we're guaranteed that the register write happens much after the register read okay so you can never have these two being reversed in order and so you will never violate this write after read hazard now with our new design you know you we have things possibly completing out of program order right so we said that instructions go through here in program order but because of the different paths they take and the different latencies for those paths you could have instructions finishing out of program order so can that cause a problem okay so let's assume the first instruction is this really long divide operation thankfully the register read still happens in the second cycle right because you do your register read over here and then you get into this really long 25 cycle path okay so thankfully the divide also does its read very early and if the second instruction is an add which, fi which finishes really fast it could do its register right as early as say cycle 5 or 6 which again thankfully is after when the read happens so even with our design because the register read happens so early it is impossible to violate this write after read dependency so this is not possible in this new pipeline the last hazard is read after read where two instructions are both reading from say R1 and this is not a true dependence because it's not as if one instruction is producing a result that is being consumed by the other one both are reading R1 even if I were to reorder these two instructions you would get exactly the same result okay so read after read hazards are usually not a problem and it's something that we will generally ignore through this course okay now let's get to this topic of imprecise exceptions so what exactly is going on over here alright so as I said before things are going in order over here but there is out of order completion of instructions okay and how does that possibly give rise to a problem let's let's take an example so let's say we have an in instruction over here which is a multiply operation and it writes something into R1 okay if it starts in cycle 1 it's take, going to take you know 1 to 9 cycles uh, we have deleted this stage over here so it'll finish so in cycle 10 is when R1 gets written into meanwhile the next instruction was let's say an add so it starts in cycle 2, 3, 4, 5. So maybe it writes into R3 and that write happens as early as cycle 5. Okay, and then there's a load over here which writes into you know R9. That finishes in cycle 7. Okay, so there are all these instructions which are finishing out of order and they are modifying the contents of R3, R9, and so on. Okay, meanwhile, you know, much later in time the multiply finishes and you discover that it had an overflow so at that point you raise an exception and you want to panic and tell the programmer that something went wrong and this is where the program went wrong okay and now when the programmer inspects the state of the machine if they were to inspect the contents of R3 and R9 they would find that it is different from what they expect right because the assumption is that you were ex executing programs in order there was a fault over here and surprisingly these instructions have also had an effect on my process state so this is not a good thing so you have to make sure that things finish in program order 
Okay, or alternatively, it's possible that you know some interrupt showed up over here. You want to jump somewhere else, execute something else, and then you want to come back to this program. And when you come back, you want to continue from here on. But if these instructions are already finished and modified uh, the contents of the register file, and if you were to redo those instructions, you could end up with something completely different. Okay, so in general, you want to provide an interface where instructions are actually modifying registers in program order. And then if you choose to raise an exception or an interrupt over here, you want to save the state of the program as of this instruction. Okay, so you want to save away the program counter, you want to save away the register file. And then after you do whatever else, you want to come back and resume execution over here. And so you have to make sure that the register file state that is saved away does not include the effects of these instructions which happen after this exception point. Okay, so a processor that uh, that allows the register file to be modified in program order will end up providing precise exceptions. Okay, so how do we enforce that? How do we make sure that my processor does allow uh, these in order modification of, of, of the register file? Okay, so let me just clear out the screen again. And what I'm going to do is, as I said, this stage has disappeared. And what I've introduced is a specific buffer over here. And actually, it's a little wider, so I'll make this a little bigger. And this buffer is called the reorder buffer. So as instructions come in and get decoded in program order, they create an entry for themselves in the reorder buffer. So the multiply comes first, and it says, here, I'm the multiply instruction. Uh, and I'm trying to write something into R1 then the add comes along and says I'm trying to write something into R3 then is the load which writes something into R9 and so on okay so now you know the add quickly quickly goes through this part of the pipeline and produces a result as early as cycle 5 and now it's getting ready to write to the register file and it first examines the reorder buffer and it says that oh I'm not the oldest instruction in the reorder buffer it looks like the multiply has to be allowed to modify R1 before I can go and modify R3. Okay, so until the multiply has finished, I will just put my result in over here and I'll and I'll move away. Okay, if somebody else wants to come along and read the value R3, they can get it from here, right? I can give this value to whoever needs it. But for now, I'm not ready to modify the register file. I will just save my value in this reorder buffer. Okay, maybe a couple of cycles later, the load goes through its own stage, comes over here, and also realizes that the multiply has not finished. So I too will write my result into this reorder buffer entry, and I'll update the register file later. Okay, in cycle 10, the multiply finally finishes, and it comes here and it says, oh, I'm the oldest instruction. So I can go ahead and modify the register file. So it goes right in and changes the value in R1 and it removes this entry from the reorder buffer. And so that allows this add to now recognize that it is the oldest instruction. Since it's the oldest instruction, it can make its state permanent. So the value that is sitting over here gets written into R3. Next cycle, this instruction becomes the oldest and says the value that is sitting over here can now be copied into R9. Okay, so we've essentially introduced one more stage over here. There is a reorder buffer stage and then from the reorder buffer I copy things into my register file so that's my register write stage okay so things came in in order and then because of instructions taking these different paths you have out of order completion into the reorder buffer and now we have introduced this new commit process which says that in program order I'm going to copy the results into the register file so this again becomes an in order commit process Okay, so instructions enter the pipeline in program order. They finish the results out of program order, which could create a problem if there were an exception. Okay, so to deal with that problem, I've said that I'm always going to copy results in program order. So if there's ever an exception, the instructions after that accepting point would not yet have copied the results into the register file. Those results would be sitting somewhere in my reorder buffer, and I can just discard them. Okay, so I've now introduced this in-order commit process which ensures that the register file contents 
are being modified in program sequential order. Okay, so if I ever raise an exception, the register file st uh, state is always clean and it can be copied away and it can be reinstated later. Okay, so that's how we dealt with this final problem. Okay, so this is where I've defined an exception uh, and uh, I've said that a processor fulfills, if it fulfills these conditions, then it provides precise exceptions. And, you know, I've also shown how to deal with each of these problems. So the multiple writes to the register file is handled by throwing more resources at the problem. Write after write hazards are done by detecting the hazard during the, uh, during the instruction decode stage. And imprecise exceptions are being handled by buffering the results as they complete in the reorder buffer. And then they are made permanent in the register file in program order with an in-order commit process.